Hey everybody, it's ZM, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. In this one, we're going to be taking on the Fire Temple, so let's get started. Huh? Is this where I heard the voice coming from? Alright, let's follow Yanobo as we make our way up to the first floor of the Fire Temple, and let's speak to him. What is this place? And why is something like this inside Death Mountain? Huh? huh? Ah, it's Princess Zelda! Ah, please wait, Goro! I gotta talk to you. Huh? What the? Where did she go? Yeah, it seems like Zelda has vanished into thin air. But let's do the same with this marbled rock as we charge into it and it vanishes into thin air. Anyways, we have opened up the entrance to the Fire Temple. And from its ominous music to its looks, I honestly love the vibe this temple gives off. Huh? There's something up ahead, Goro! All right, let's see what's up ahead, as it's this way, according to Yanobo, as he rolls his way up. And let's make our way up there as well. Link, huh. over there! Huh? It's Zelda, Goro! Huh. Not good, not good! Princess Zelda's stuck inside there! We gotta hurry and help her! Huh? But how do we get in there, Goro? Alright, to get things started, let's go ahead and activate the Zonai device over here, as not only will it give us access to teleport back here whenever we please, but uh, it should also help us out with what we need to do in terms of reaching Zelda here in the Fire Temple. So, let's see exactly what happens. Did you see that? The gate! It moved a little just now, Goro! Hear that? There it is again! Young little rock. The gate you must pass through is firmly locked with five padlocks. You have the power to unlock them all. Do so. Then the gate should open. Heed my words. Huh? No denying, I heard it loud and clear this time. But who could it be? And what did they mean by young little rock? Hmm. They did tell us how to open the gate, so they can't be all bad, right? So, all we gotta do is unlock the five locks and then we can get in there? So, to take on the Fire Temple with Yanobo, we have to unlock the five padlocks. And, uh, I absolutely love this temple from its design, the way we can see a light route all the way outside in the depths. And as you can see, we have two pathways. There's a padlock over there that we can unlock, and then the rest are this way. And we're gonna start by heading this way, as this will lead us to the one on the opposite side, believe it or not, as this pathway will actually take us up throughout the temple and really let us explore it. So let's get things started by, uh, I guess, picking up this strong bow uh, from this construct, as in general we could use that. But okay, so what we want to do, yes, is jump over these platforms, you know, through the lava, and now create our own, as there is a fire hydrant. And I absolutely love this temple. It is very reminiscent of the fire temple from ocarina of time mainly in looks and like the vibe and music it gives off but not at all when it comes to its puzzles as we're going to be using these minecarts a lot throughout this temple and that's kind of the main gist which makes it very unique in its own way but yeah, as you can see you can see outside into the depths i love how this temple works 
And all we need to do here is go ahead and make sure we hit that switch as it will allow us to continue forward because if we didn't, we would be going around in a loop. But anyways, from here, let's go ahead and grab this fire hydrant as it's already active. And with the water, we can easily stun this fire like like as I don't like it. So let's go ahead and quickly take care of it like so. Um, but uh, yeah, in general, we're going to be using the mine cart quite a bit throughout this temple. And I'm going to make sure to show off the most efficient way to do things. Now, luckily, the first padlock we can unlock is actually located here. Uh, all we need to do is make our way down here, but I am going to need another fire hydrant because I lost mine uh, after attempting to phase that like-like. So let's go ahead and bring it down because what we want to do with it is go ahead and uh, make our own platforms here. Uh, if you go ahead and, yeah, move the water in like a diagonal type um, way, you can easily make a longer platform like so. But if for some reason you couldn't make it, you can just attach two small lava slabs together and make the longer one. And by doing so, as you can see, we have created a ramp for Yanobo to launch himself into the marbled rock that was blocking the way, which has now taken us to where the first area is to unlock the padlock. Whoa, Link, check that out. What is that thing? It looks like a gong. Yes, these gongs are how we're gonna unlock the padlocks. All we need to do is go ahead and charge into one. And just like that, yeah, the noise caused it to drop the padlock. <laughs> Pretty cool. That must be the first padlock, Link. Oh, there are four more for us to find. That's a lot. All right, relax, bro. They're gonna be really easy to find, firstly, and secondly, five objectives throughout the entire temple isn't really enough content, sadly. Again, I love these temples when it comes to being tagged along with the, you know, new sage that guides you throughout it, along with the fact of the aesthetic and having it connected to an overall overworld area. Like, we're connected to the rest of the depths, just like the previous temples were connected to Hyrule Sky. I love its concept, but, um, yeah, it, it's still underwhelming compared to previous fire temples. But not complaining, just saying. Anyways, um, yeah, our uh, minecart, I guess, kind of just drifted off on its own. Uh, it must have slowly wheeled its way back. But luckily, we can use a new minecart. And yeah, all we need to do is go ahead and open up the uh, area that was blocked by activating that switch. And just like that, we can continue on. And yeah, here we're gonna utilize Yanopo's, uh, you know, charge mechanic as we can easily take care of these enemies that are gonna try to mess with us on go. the minecart railing. Luckily, all we need to do is just continue downwards. And <laughs> I do like how we picked up all of that constructs items. But yes, we're gonna go ahead and make our way here. And uh, we really don't need to do much here aside from, yeah, just swap that by hitting the switch it will easily change the direction of this minecart and then we're going to change the direction by having yonobo charge into that to uh yeah make our way here and now there are two pathways here to not make things confusing i'm not going to bother taking any pathway that doesn't take you to one of the padlocks you can unlock that being the gongs so all we need to do is go ahead and hit this and it will cause this railway to now allow us to head to the other side. But keep in mind that by hitting that weird bell, it also causes that railway to move back upwards because we're going to be utilizing that later on. So what we want to do is, yeah, just continue down here and uh, we're going to see another marbled rock over here that we're going to have to use our buddy Yanobo for. So let's go ahead and charge and yeah, do so like that. And uh, I believe, yeah, that pretty much does it because, yes, there are platforms being made. These lava slabs from the fire hydrant that uh, the giant marbled rock was covering. And, and now we can easily use it to recall our way to where this part of the room is. And just like that, yes, we have passed that sea of lava. And now let's go ahead and take on this construct as right behind it there is, yes, another gong that we can hit and now let me go ahead and just fuse my zonite sword to this rusty broadsword it'll give it a little bit of extra life not much it's probably gonna break soon uh that's beside the point let's go ahead and now ring this gong 
And just like that, we have now done two with three left. But let's hear it for Mianopo himself, as he's going to say it. Three to go. Let's hurry, Goro. Let's hurry indeed. All right. So what we need to do from here is now backtrack. And like I said before, let's see if I can make this jump. Nice. Okay. Like I said before, um, that railway we just took can be um, angled upwards. And we're going to be doing that just now. So... Uh, if you do end up losing your minecart as if you, like, deactivate it, sometimes it just slowly goes down the rail. But luckily, you could always find more. So as you can see, I could just plop a new one just like that. But from here, uh, what we want to do is we want to activate this minecart for a second. Just, you know, have it push us a little bit. And then let me stop it. And then let me go ahead and see if I can hit this bell. Yes, just like so. Now we can head upwards. Because as you can see, we're on the other side, and now it's angled upwards for us to continue on. And this here is the third floor. And what's really cool is um, we can actually create a shortcut all the way back down to the entrance of the fire temple and be able to come back up here whenever we please without using the railing system just by activating this. But yeah, I'm not going to go down there. I don't need to. That's just a shortcut if you need it. But let's now focus... Um, this enemy down as quickly as possible. I do have this soldier spear, which does pretty decent damage. So let's just use it on him as he is going to give me his construct horn, which is very, very useful when fusing into weapons. As you can see, yes, the captain construct horn too. And um, there's a bunch of other things we can pick up. I, you know what? Let's just pick up this construct bow as well. You know, they're strong. They do good damage. Why, why leave them on the floor? I might as well put them to use and replace my, you know, crappier bows. But okay, so picked up some arrows, some rockets, hydrants, all of that jazz. But okay, so from here, because again, this temple can get confusing with all the railways. Um, what I want to do is go ahead and plop this, not here, but over here where the broken railway is. As you can see, there is a broken railway. Ignore the other one. We're going to use that to come back here. So with the um, railway broken, the only way we're going to be able to pass it with these is by using one of these rockets. And luckily, the game provides it for you. So I'm just going to use whatever the game provides. Don't worry, I'm not going to do anything that I don't believe the game and designers intended for the player to do it in a very easy way. But as you can see, all I want to do is plop a um, rocket on it. And I want to make sure it's perfectly in the center because when you activate it if it's not centered on the minecart it will cause it to go a different direction and won't as you can see make it to the other side but just like that we managed to make it to the other side and now let's go ahead and quickly make work of this guy here but um yeah before we make our way back down as we're gonna make our way back down to that third floor room uh, where all of those railways are. We're going to go ahead and get ourselves the next padlock and unlock it ourselves. So uh, first thing I want to do is kind of show off this mechanic here. So as you can see with this broken bridge, I could use this as a ramp as it literally is facing upwards and yet it will launch Yanobo forward. This is an example to what we're going to do here. And this is where you really need to use it. And I can assure you a lot of people, including myself, when I first took on this temple, didn't do it this way. As you can see, yes, you want to use this bridge as a ramp. And don't worry if uh, Yanobo messes up uh, like once or twice. You just want to make sure you angle it perfectly. Because if we do, yes, Yanobo will be able to hit this marbled rock from the top, dropping this giant block. And of course, with it just being dropped, we can recall it and have it, yes, launch us back up to where it dropped, in which it holds the... Yes, secret gong here on the fifth floor of the fire temple. Pretty cool. Again, there are many other ways to solve this, but I believe this is a way Nintendo wanted players to do it. And I guess I have to go ahead and do that again. That was weird. Um, so just make sure we actually hit the gong like so. There we go. All right, with that, now let's focus on the final two. And I'm going to make sure to make this as easy to follow as I have so far. Just two left, Link. Let's keep it up, Goro. All right, let's keep it up, Goro. You're right. All right, now I need to go ahead and jump down from here. Um, and like I said, we're going to go ahead and backtrack our way to where um, the third floor was, where that shortcut is. So all I need to do is go ahead and hit this bell here as it will have the uh, railway that will take us down uh aligned perfectly to drop us down okay let's make sure this is aligned perfectly as well as there you go 
once the minecart is on the railing it kind of adjusts itself and just like that we can go ahead and make our way back down to this floor now from this floor we're going to be able to get the last two by using the railway over here and this is where it gets complicated but again i'm going to make sure to make this really simple to follow along so uh, i want to ride this all the way over to the other side without touching these bells without messing with anything i'm not going to do anything yet i'm just going to let things be and just continue my way down here and i'll show you why and i love how the music gets more and more hype i love daruk's theme in my eyes it's like one of breath of the wild's best themes and them combining it into the fire temple within this game and making it the overall goron theme now is amazing because it's easily one of the best themes within the franchise altogether but okay so from here as you can see i destroyed that marbled rock and what was in it is a bell. This bell is very important as it's gonna allow us to adjust these railways the proper way. So um, go ahead and have this move us all the way back like so uh, without touching obviously that bell in particular. And then you see these two, yes, I made sure to ignore these two, but now with everything kind of connected together, um, we're gonna go ahead and hit this one and we're going to go ahead and hit this one once as well, which will have the railway aligned to this one. Um, as you saw, I pretty much opened up this railway by uh, hitting that marbled rock, and I believe it immediately activated the bell. For those wondering, that's why I didn't hit it twice. But as you can see, yeah, I hate how my minecart, since I deactivated myself early on, it... Um, starts moving on its own like drifting away but luckily you can do this if it stays in place as these literally kind of just Here reverse the placement of the minecart and i find that really cool but anyways yes now with all of that said and done we're gonna go ahead and make our way back here and since i hit those two bells which uh, had the railway set to this pathway facing upwards and taking us to the next floor you know higher up it will continue to take us to where we need to go and hopefully this wasn't you know confusing to follow i feel like uh, i made it as simple as possible and made sure not to do any steps out of order as now we just need to cruise our way up to where the final two uh lock are i guess uh, or rather gongs that will then cause the locks to open up but anyways yeah let's go ahead and pick up this cobble crusher i want to make use of that strong zonite sword and we'll use the cobble crusher as intended instead of having it on a one-handed weapon we'll have it on a two-handed uh just a bit stronger with that zonite uh sword but okay so yeah from here like i said we're going to continue cruising up as uh we're just going to follow this pathway here and we can see the gong over there one of the gongs that we're going to have to strike with yonobo but let me just show off how to do this very easily again there are many ways to solve this i just feel like the pathway i'm taking is the easiest when you don't have any resources and again you're just relying on what the game provided i feel like again because people always get upset when i say the definitive way but you know the way the developers somewhat intended the players to do let's just say that because i know there's many other ways but i feel like this is like the simplest way so we want to make our way down there and the way we're going to do so to make our way back up here and i love how we could see that uh light uh, route from all the way back there, you know, just kind of showing how huge the depth really is. But okay, so from here, we want to go ahead and hit this bell to have the railway facing downwards and it can take us back up from this area because we're going to want to come back here after we activate this. So let's go ahead and my sword is a bit long. It might, yep, hit that bell and cause it to rotate. Let me hit it again from here, but it might end up, yep, as you can see. So while this is a convenient method, if you don't want to move it yourself, if the fan isn't, um, you know, like if, if like the minecart isn't perfectly near the end of the track, it, yeah, it may break off the fan while rotating as you saw. So whatever, just want to show that off. It, it's still a cool concept to, you know, rotate your cart to the opposite direction. But yeah, sometimes it can get pretty annoying. Anyways, let's go ahead and leave our minecart here. And as you can see, yes, here is a another uh, gong. But first, what we want to do is go ahead and use this ramp to hit this uh, marbled rock. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and utilize, yes, the water that's coming out of the hydrant to grab this platform. And all we really need is this platform, as this platform will allow us to attach this and kind of angle it like a ramp just like that. 
And this honestly should do the trick. So let's go ahead and align Yanopo on this ramp. And just like that, hell yeah, we've done it. Okay, with that, one more remains. But again, let's hear it from the man himself. So. Only one left. Almost done, Goro. All right, I'm excited. I'm ready. And uh, once we do strike the final one, the music is just going to ramp up and sound so amazing. But as you can see, yeah, I'm going to use this ramp to... Uh, angle it this way and yes all I want to do now oh. is use uh, Yanobo once again and just have him hit it from here as this will open up where the final gong is and um, to make your way there as uh, you can just attempt to glide there and you know whatever I'm gonna go ahead and show off though how to do this while not breaking a fan now if I hit it it shouldn't break the fan as the fan isn't on the edge um, but there we go. But okay, yeah, the music is ramping up. We're, we've literally are ramping our way back up as we make our way up here. Um, but yeah, to make your way back up here without necessarily having to use, you know, like a lot of stamina or risking it, I feel like, yeah, just heading back up the uh, railway like so, ascending upwards like this, and then reaching the area where yeah there's a crack here as you can see it's just a lot of missing floor this is where the marbled rock was right underneath us so you can just jump down like this and there you go you're done you're ready to go and like i said from the beginning of this temple the last padlock we're gonna get is over here as uh, we couldn't actually reach to it until we made our way from the top which is what we're doing here as uh yeah this is the only way you can actually get to it so let's go ahead and drop this soldier um or pick up the soldier reaper and drop the rock hammer and then yeah drop our way back down to the first floor where again the final gong is yes we have done it so now where is Yanopo? okay there we go all right now let's go ahead and activate the final one here we go Now just listen to this music. Yeah, it is so good. I I love the way the theme sounds towards the end. You really hear uh, the elements from Daruk's theme come into play, and it just reminds me of Breath of the Wild before it came out. Super nostalgic, so nice. But yeah, as you can see, we are finally done with this temple. Pretty short, of course, like I said, but I still enjoyed it uh, for what it's worth, and uh, hopefully this was a really easy way to follow things. But anyways, let's go ahead and fuse this weapon. It's kind of cool how you can take a one-handed sword and turn it into two-handed by fusing it to a strong zonite sword as you can see but let's use the cobble crusher instead as now it's time to take on the boss of course i mean we're done with the temple so all the padlocks have been unlocked let's go ahead and activate the zonite device this time with success and uh actually open this up so here we go i am real excited for this Huh? It opened! We gotta smash those red rocks and rescue Zelda! Alright, you got it, Goro! Let's do this! So, as you can see, yes, the giant marbled rocks are right above us. How are we gonna get it, though? Well, luckily, we can use a Nobo like a bowling ball. And, yes, he's gonna make his way all the way up and break them just like that.
All right, let's do this. Let's take on Marbled Goma. Yes, now it may make sense why it has that eye in the center. Why it kind of looks like a spider, but with rocks. And uh, the overall way it spawned, you know, with it being from the ceiling looking directly at us. It's in reference to Queen Goma from, you know, the Zelda series prior. But as you can see, yes, by destroying its legs, you know, it is literally marbled rocks as its legs. Uh, we can easily have, you know, but charge into it and then dish out insane damage once it falls down as its eye obviously is the weak point. Really cool boss battle, but sadly it's super easy and um, it, it might not last too long. So I'm going to try to enjoy it for what it's worth and show off the many ways you can tackle it. So while you can destroy its marbled, you know, legs, you could also ascend into it from the bottom and literally reach its eye like so. How cool is that? I love the versatility this game offers. But okay, I didn't want to do that though. And usually if you do attack it that way, it will uh, continuously stomp, which can hurt you. Uh, as you can see, it is stomping right now, but it could even hurt you when you're on top of it. So let's just go ahead and weaken it by once again attacking its marbled leggings. And um, it does have another way, I believe. Yeah, these rocks here, you could recall them. Uh, as you can see, they are blocking uh, ways to its legs because um, some of them will be like you know just directly in front of it and yeah, if I hit that yeah it won't work but as you can see yeah if you recall it you can have it explode on its eye which will uh, make it even easier for you to then attack its marbled legging but now let's go ahead and dish out an insane amount of damage as we weaken it down to half of its HP and reach the final phase of this boss battle All right, this phase is very reminiscent of Queen Goma, but what we have to do here is knock it back down. While you can use your arrows to attack its eye, there are many other methods in uh, solving this. So, as you can see, yeah, I can easily recall these giant marbled rocks that it drops, and if I could get it to come next to it, um, I can have it actually explode either on its eye or its leg which will weaken it, but uh, the easiest way to do it is just to go ahead and have Yenobo charge into its leg from the ceiling like so. And just like that, it will fall down. And now, yes, is our chance, like Yenobo said. So let's make quick work of Marbled Goma. Again, I love how all of these boss battles are in reference to previous Zelda bosses, but like reimagined. This is, you know, the Marbled version of this spider we know from the series. Uh, but, uh, I don't know. It still definitely lost its charm because uh, it reminds me nothing of it. But I still like the reference altogether. But anyways, so let's go ahead and whittle it down some more. We can't actually attack it while it's on the floor anymore because it will continue jumping back up to the ceiling. But again, all you need to do is just send Yanobo like that. And just like that, we've done it. It should fall back down onto the ground. Let's avoid these marbled rocks. And once again, go ham. This time I'm going to use the uh, Lazul blade, you know, the fire breath blade, as uh, my other weapon was burning within the heat. But as you can see, this one isn't. And we're just going to dish out that insane fire damage. Now it's about to die, but also it's about to get up. So let me avoid it so I don't take any damage. And we'll kind of save up that final hit, kind of savor it. As again, these boss battles just go by way too quickly. And sadly, all I need to do is once again, send Yanobo back up like so. Have it fall down, and yeah, I guess this is our chance. So here we go. I enjoyed it for what it's worth, but I guess it's time to say goodbye to you, Marbled Goma. I really do like the way the eye looks, but let's go ahead and put an end to it.
I do find it cool that the tear was hidden in the ceiling even throughout the boss battle. But anyways, let's go ahead and pick up this heart container as we have completed the fire temple. And with that done, Yenovo is ready to pick up his sacred stone. So before we speak to him, let's make sure we take that snapshot of the boulder breaker. You know, Daruk's legendary weapon, this time on Yenobo while he stands in front of a tier. It's pretty cool as all the compendium champion weapons will have these photos. But you know the drill. Let's go ahead and witness the imprisoning war from the ancient Goron Sage's perspective. been talking to us this whole time, Goro? Yes, I am your ancestor from a time long past. I served the first king of Hyrule as a mighty warrior, and as a sage who, like you, could command fire. You fight using your body as a weapon. Impressive. You are my descendant, the pride of the Gorons. You defeated that monster, the source of those foul rocks. But it was the Demon King who summoned it. He sent that monster to keep you from obtaining the stone you just found. My secret stone. Secret stone? Demon King? Huh. So this is the first you've heard of any of this. Then listen carefully to what I have to say. Let me tell you about the imprisoning war, and the duty of our people. Many years ago, in the Kingdom of Hyrule's earliest days, a great evil, the Demon King, sought to conquer the Kingdom and kill everyone who resisted his rule. Rauru, the first king of Hyrule, rose up to oppose him, along with me and five other warriors. And to fight the Demon King, Rauru trusted us with secret stones. Incredible artifacts that amplified our powers. I stood beside my fellow sages as the Sage of Fire, stronger than ever with my secret stone. However, we were no match for the Demon King. Even my strongest blows weren't enough to break him. Rauru understood that we couldn't overcome the Demon King. In one last brave act, our leader sacrificed himself to imprison that monster. That was... the imprisoning war. And then some time later... The Sage of Time, one of the six sages, came to me. Her visit would set the Goron's duty in stone. The magic restraining the Demon King will be undone. He will return. When that time comes, a noble swordsman named Link will oppose him. But Link will need help. Lend him your power. Your fire. The Goron's mastery of fire. In that moment, the duty of the Goron people was clear. I'd like nothing more than to smash the Demon King. I swear that when the Demon King returns, the Sage of Fire will awaken again. The Goron 
Goron Sage and the Goron people will fight alongside your swordsmen. And that's what you need to know about the imprisoning war and of our people's duty. You saved Goron City, but the Demon King is still out there. Yonobo, Little Rock, take up my secret stone and honor the pledge I made to the Sage of Time long ago. Fight alongside the swordsman. Link. So, it's my duty to help you fight? Hmm. And he wants me to inherit this? Really? I don't know if I'm nearly as great as my ancestor was. But then, if I don't help out, I'd be letting everyone else down! There's no way I'll let that happen! I can do this! your fist. Hmm. You can count on the Sage of Fire. I'll fight by your side till the very end. And take this. It's proof I stand with you. With that ring, you'll be able to call on my power anytime, Goro. I promise, I'll be strong enough to fight beside you, no matter what happens. Okay, let's head back. I can hardly believe ya, making me worry like that. I oughta. Ooh. Please don't be mad at President Yanobo. Oh. It's okay, Slurgo. I'm the one who made such a mess of things, after all. If I had just been more careful. <laughs> you said you'd put Goron City back to normal, and you did! Ooh. 
You were the hero of Goron City. You were when you made Yanoboko, and you still are now. I, I, thank you, Goro. Oh. And we have to thank you too, Link. You got rid of the marbled rock roast, and smiles are coming back to Goron City. I keep imagining what might have happened if you hadn't broken that mask. Huh. Ugh, no, I can't even think about it. Ooh. Princess Zelda wasn't angry we ruined the mask, was she? Oh. Actually, we weren't able to catch up with her. It was all so strange. Now that I think about it, it seemed like she was walking toward that giant monster by choice. After that, we didn't see her again. Aww. President Yanobo, do you think that maybe Princess Zelda is one of the bad guys? Huh? What do you mean? Ah. Like maybe the giant monster was pretending to be Princess Zelda. Huh? No way! Oh. Hang on, come to think of it, the person my ancestor referred to as the Sage of Time, she said she wanted to help the Swordsman Link. Now that I think about it, that was definitely Princess Zelda. Mm. I don't know why or how she was there in the past. <laughs> but whatever the case is, that means the Princess Zelda we saw was an imposter. And that imposter is making a bad name for our Princess Zelda. That's no good. Yep. We've got to find him and pummel him, Goro. I'll ask my guys at Yanobo Co. to search the area around the city for any leads on the princess. Huh. Even if you're not here with me, we'll still be connected, Link. Ooh. You can count on me! Vow of Yanobo, Sage of Fire. Yes, now we have Yanobo at our side as we can summon or dismiss the avatar of Yanobo. The enthusiasm is great and all, but let's not go digging up any more weird rocks. You got that, President Yanobo? And that does it for Yanobo of Goron City, as he has redeemed himself as the hero of Goron once more, freeing them from that marbled rock drug, even though he is the one who hooked them on it. But with Yanobo Awoken as the Sage of Fire, we can have his avatar with us at all times. And we can actually customize it with this side quest that actually involves Bluto. So let's speak to them. Hmm. I remembered something about that other Zelda. When we were mining Marbled Rock Roast on the north side of Death Mountain, she said something kind of funny. She told me not to go near the Lizard Lakes, but she didn't say why. <laughs> Bit surprised to hear the words Lizard Lakes coming from Yurikara. Don't much hear about them lakes these days. I still recall an old nursery rhyme about them. One brother hunts what the other brother hides. Two lizards fighting over what's inside. Not everyone knows this, but the lizard lakes are also called the lizard brothers. I searched high and low for them back in my younger years. Always thought treasure must be there somewhere. Then on my hunt, that mountain blew its top. It was covered in lava before you could say boom. Boy, I'd forgotten all about my research for the lakes. That's it. Talking about it has made me all worked up. It's been a real long time, but I'm ready to start the hunt again. Best place to start looking is halfway up Death Mountain. My hunch way back when led me to the north side. There's a Yanobo code dig site there too, so we can hop in a minecart and get cracking. My aching back. Yeah, the hidden treasure at Lizard Likes. Now this side quest will actually give us something that we've seen the ancient Sage of Fire wearing and that we can see Yanobo's avatar wear with us. And as you can see, it's located here at the Lizard Likes. You could tell by the two lizard cutouts uh, staring at each other, you know, the two lizard brothers. And well, let's go ahead and make our way there by teleporting to this shrine and finding that treasure Bluto was talking about. Now, it's interesting to think that Bluto had so much trouble finding this chest as it's actually really easy to find. Uh, and we're going to get started by first activating Yanovo's avatar as, yeah, we have left Goron City. So now we can activate it since we're outside of the city. And I like the way he looks with those dull eyes. Um, but 
Anyways, you won't have to see his eyes after doing this quest as, like I said, we're going to be getting something that will actually alter, you know, Bo's avatar in reference to the ancient Sage of Fire. So you're going to see what I'm talking about. And this can be applied to all of the avatars. Uh, we'll just start off by getting this one first. Interestingly enough, you can get these through Amiibo, but obviously I'm going to not do that. I'm going to show off how to get them the true way. So I want to ascend my way upwards, and the easiest way to ascend was just to find an area within that cave that uh, didn't have a ceiling too high up. But now what we want to do is make our way to, well, that lizard cave. So, um... Uh, well, I guess the lizard likes that will lead to a cave. So as you can see, yeah, here is the lizard cutout. It's one of the brothers, you know. Um, as you can see, yeah, it literally is a lizard-like. It's shaped like one. And where its face is actually pointing at is, well, yeah, as you can see, a cave. That is where we want to go to. So real simple to find, not at all difficult. We just got to literally go where the lizard-like is facing. So from there, let's go ahead and open up this as we have now found the the cave known as lizard's burrow yes this is clearly where the lizard burrowed something very important now now i like to think that divine beast va rudania is the lizard that they're actually speaking of as uh we're gonna get ourselves within this chest something that uh yeah you may not expect within tears of the kingdom that being Yes, Varudania's Divine Helm. Literally a Divine Beast helmet. Uh, literally in the look of a lizard, of course, as that was one of the temples. But as you can see, if I equipped it, it will actually have, yes, Yanobo's avatar equipped the mask that the ancient Fire Sage was wearing. And um, it's really cool because pretty much we're wearing a, you know... Sheikah version of the, you know, fire sage that's it's representing, you know, with Varudania. And then he's wearing a Zonai version with it being green. And I do wish we could have unlocked those ourselves, but it's cool that the new sages can literally wear what the old sages used to wear as masks. It looks so dope, and yes, you can do this with all the avatars. You just have to find them and do their quests. I thought I'd do this one because it's very straightforward and easy, but don't worry. We're going to be getting them all. The whole idea of not using Amiibo so far throughout this playthrough is so I can get everything that you can get through Amiibo legitly through the game. That's why I haven't bothered with them whatsoever, as yes, we can actually get all of this stuff within the game without having to scan any amiibo even though i have amiibo to scan uh, it's really cool how there are side quests for all of those items but anyways now that we have made our way back out of this cave and we're done with the lizard burrow and the likes let's go ahead and take on the shrine as it's right nearby and uh, we're two shrines away from being able to upgrade our hearts once again so we're gonna make sure to do that before we end off the video so yeah there happens to be a shrine all the way over here uh, not too far from the lake, so let's just go ahead and activate it and take this one on real quickly. And then from there, we'll see what else. Now, this shrine is actually a really cool concept, and uh, solving it is super easy, but it is actually known as alignment. And yeah, the title says it all. All we need to do is align this here. And by recalling, as you can see, and having the divided parts of this uh, go in opposite directions, we can easily align all of this together and make ourselves an area to where we can ascend all the way up from the bottom to the very top like so so just like that we have aligned everything and now let's go ahead and uh, reward ourselves by actually ascending through it so yeah i, I really like the concept of this because it just shows how link will literally phase through any wall that's connected so all you need to do to solve this was connect it all together and just like that yeah we were able to make our way to the top um just really cool gimmick all together uh, i love it again super simple sure but uh fun nonetheless and even if it is easy to solve it's still a cool concept to keep in mind as it kind of plays like a tutorial of sorts but anyways with that done let's go ahead and continue onward and while there still are so many things to find throughout Death Mountain, uh, from caves to shrines, let's just go ahead and make our way behind the shrine and locate another one that's really close by. As, uh, yeah, from here, if we start making our way to the east, 
will be making our way to Akala. And I definitely want to visit that area as we haven't yet. But um, luckily, there is a really easy shrine that if we make our way down here and just turn to the east, yes, we could see it just like that near Gut Rock Check, which uh, used to be an old Goron minigame from Breath of the Wild. We can make our way up there and pick up 100 rupees and whatnot, but I'm just going to focus on the shrine. Uh, as you can see, even Dinrail is soaring the skies from far away. And as much as I want to interact with it and, you know, ride the dragon, especially with uh, the Ember set that I'm wearing, let's put that aside. You know, we finished the Fire Temple. So for now, I just want to wrap things up by uh, completing the shrine really quickly. And that way we can upgrade our heart containers and then end things off. But again, there's still so much to do within Akala and there are even more shrines located around here but again we'll do that in a future video so for now let's just focus on this one at hand and take it on real quick now, of course, this is one of the challenge shrines as we are stripped away from everything, not just our weapons, but our outfit. And uh, yeah, we got to go ahead and take it on with what we're provided from the shrine. Now, again, I enjoy these shrines and this one's actually pretty simple and easy as we really just need one thing in particular. And I believe it's literally the title of the shrine, that being Smash. Yes. This is Proving Grounds Smash, as we really need to smash things. And uh, essentially what we need to do is fuse this weapon to then smash things. So we gotta find what it is we're gonna fuse things to. So first, let me just get rid of this construct here. Uh, might as well just push it into the water. Okay, well now it doesn't want to, but whatever. Let's just keep hitting it just like that. Okay, now it fell in. Let me pick up its stick. And you know what, let me fuse my weapon to the zone I charge that's in the water. There we go. Now we got a little extra damage that we're going to use on this construct. And we got another one next to us. Okay, I got to be careful here. Now, I just really want that sturdy stick it's holding, as that will be the perfect thing to use to fuse it to the thing I'm going to smash things with, that being the main objective. As you can see, right up here is, uh, you know what, screw it. Let's just ascend and do it. I'm not even going to bother waiting for the sturdy stick. Let's just fuse the two weapons we have with us to these spiky iron balls. Yes, um, this here will allow us to smash things real quickly and make quick work of these constructs. As you can see, yeah, that, that is damage. And I love how it staggers them with each hit because uh, it's such a strong attachment that yeah, you're able to make quick work without really worrying about them attacking you back. Um, because of the amount of damage and recoil you're giving them with each and every strike. But okay, so with that, now we can just finish this. As believe it or not, all we need to do is get all of these to fall in the water. Okay, well, not our weapon, but uh, luckily I do have another spiked ball. So as long as I chuck it perfectly at this right here, we can get it to fall. Yes, there we go. And just like that, they all fall in the water and we're done. Yeah, super cool. And this is what I meant by smashing. Yeah, we just had to smash that, and uh, yeah, we have killed them all by having them fall in the water. <laughs> I really do like this concept altogether, but there we go. That does it for this shrine. Again, super simple, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and pick up the chest it has to offer, though. I'm pretty sure it should be a weapon that is somewhat useful, and okay, it is actually a Captain two reaper now this is pretty nice because we've used one of these but as a two-handed weapon but since it's attached to a normal zonite sword as you can see yeah we can hold it with one hand now i love how literally any weapon that's two-handed you could turn it into one-handed by you know attaching it to a one-handed weapon or a one-handed zonite sword so yeah i just love the versatility this game has to offer with each and every weapon you could turn it into a spear a sword whatever but anyways with this shrine done let's move on yeah with all of this said and done I guess from here, let's go ahead and make our way back to the lookout landing to see how things have updated. Now, I do want to complete the map, and we're probably going to have that be our next focus before reaching the next regional phenomena. So let's keep that in mind, but for now, let's just end things off over at the lookout landing. Now, there are two things I want to do while I'm here real quick. Uh, first is actually, so let's make it three things. First thing is, uh, check out the banner, yes! As you can see, the Goron banner has been added with the Rito and the Zora. Now we're just missing the Gerudo. So cool to see Hyrule unite. And as you can see, yes, Gorons are now here in the lookout landing. We got this little baby one rolling along. I love how each time you come back to the lookout landing with each regional phenomena completed, you see more has changed. Even they have added the Flame Breaker armor, as you can see, just like they added with the Rito 
armor. But anyways, uh, what I do want to do as well is speak to, uh, you know, Hetsu so we can go ahead and upgrade our inventory as I am sitting on a Korok Siege, which is the exact amount I need to upgrade my weapon stash. For those wondering, I always focus on the weapon stash first as, uh, especially when you have the Hylian shield, you don't really need to care for your, um shield stash and then luckily bows don't break as quickly and i don't really use bows as much as i use you know actual melee weapons so that's why for me it's always you know my go-to when it comes to expanding my stash like it was in breath of the wild but okay with that said and done the third thing i want to do was also upgrade my heart containers as uh yeah we completed two shrines and we're already sitting on two um light blessing so we have four in total let's go ahead and upgrade it again the reason why i stopped at two stamina wheels while we can't get a third is because you only need two for a major quest that we're gonna do really really soon actually now that we have wrapped up three of the major regional phenomena things are gonna get even more intense as we move along so i am super excited moving forward let's go ahead and pick up this heart container get ourselves a bit stronger as yeah um we are slowly wrapping things up it's actually kind of nice to think of all the progress we've done so far especially with how big this game actually is yeah we haven't scratched the depths but we'll get there soon um i was gonna say surface but we have scratched the surface pretty well we haven't scratched the depths though if you get what i'm saying anyways yeah let's go ahead and uh, i guess end things off here um since we have completed the fire temple uh, i guess i no longer need to be wearing this set well i do love the ember set like i said uh let's go back to our casual champion leathers you know the hylian trousers and just our long hair to represent tears of the kingdom there we go linky is looking more traditional and now we are ready for what lies ahead as we stare at the banners that we have reunited hyrule with super cool to see anyways thank you all so much for watching be sure to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed and join me next time as we continue to save hyrule and bring it together i've been zm and i'll see you all then